Hey guys, welcome to our series with Sopico. Hi guys. Anna, what do you have for me today? Well, I'm gonna show you a game that Karpo played against Kasparov. Oh really? I love those players, especially Kasparov. What That's about you? That's different styles. Yeah. I prefer Karpov. Oh really? <laughs> of let's course. See, let's see. <laughs> In this game, Kasparov will make a weakness on his queen side and Karpo will make a great use of it and win the game. Wow, amazing. Looking forward to see. First of all, we have this position where it's black to move. Mm -hmm. What would you play, Sopiko? Well, what about b5? I just thought about the move. b5? What's the idea? Well, the idea is to make this c4 square very strong and support the bishop. Uh, well, that's fine that you're supporting the c4 square, but you remember that pawns don't go backwards, right? Well, and if you commit a weakness, it's gonna stay there. Yeah, I agree with you, but what do you suggest? I think b6 is a better move. It's more solid, safe. And then I can just take on d3, move the knight to c4, queen d7, rook d8, and I have a very, very solid and safe position. But it's very safe. Don't you think that uh, you position needs a bit active moves? Mm, well, first I want to have a safe position and then step by step I'm going to improve my position. But what was in, played in the game? b5. Told but you. I don't like that move. Okay. It's Kasparov. It's not Karpov. Okay. I'm sure he that has that... aggressive style. I love his style. I'm sure that Karpov would have never played b5 in this position. Well, the game went on with bishop g5. And now, after a6, um, what about there are bishop plenty of e7? options. Oh, bishop e7? Yeah. What are Isn't you... it a, there a little tactic like bishop e7, queen e7, oh, queen right. e5? Oh, you're right. What's going to happen then? Queen takes, queen a5. And, and now... you can take the bishop maybe simply on d3. Yeah, rook takes. And queen e4. Oh, and now, well, the rook has to do something. Let's go back. And let's just protect the pawn a6, so black is doing Black fine, is fine, I think. then. Yeah. yeah, so bishop takes e7 doesn't work. Okay. But it was an excellent idea. Ah. It's, it's interesting. Of course, yeah. one has to check if it works. But in my opinion, this knight on a5 is a bad piece, so I would prefer exactly. not to exchange it. Okay, this time I agree with you. Thanks. <laughs> Karpov just continued with rook bc1, a logical move coming to the c5. And now bishop takes d3, there are plenty of exchanges coming, and we reached this critical position. Oh my god. In which is Kasparov to move, and the e7 pawn is hanging. There are plenty of moves. There yeah. is queen b7. But what about knight c4? Maybe the b2 square uh, is very c4. You want to play active again. Yeah, knight I just C4. want to sacrifice so the pawn. So you ignore your pawn, you ignore the... I thing. do, I do. But I have some idea that uh, uh, the b2 square is very weak and I give you a double attack on the queen. I and see. Direct. Tricky goes. Tricky. So you want to play this move next. Why? But wait a second. I take on e7 attacking your rook. So I just attack your bishop back, rook e8. And now you are threatening my bishop and a double attack on b2. Exactly. Oh, you have only one move, bishop a3, I guess. Oh, bishop a3 defending against both of the threats. Exactly. But what about the e4 pawn then? If I just exchange on a3. Oh, you're right. Take... Knight takes, queen takes, and you take the pawn on e4. But what's this position? Oh, it's With very complicated. d5 fast pawn. Yeah, it's very complicated, but my bishop is very good also on g7. Yeah. I mean, you think I have the black is fine. I I think it's very unclear position, but um, I cannot say much about this position. It's just very unclear difficult, very for difficult me to evaluate to it. it. And you have to see this line from the very beginning exactly. when we decide to play knight c4 or not. But um, what, what other options do we have? Well. We can just protect the pawn then, but um, what, what Kasparov played? He played a very strange move for his style, rook e8. Exactly, that's what I'm telling, knight c4 is uh, totally in Kasparov's style. <laughs> so you vote for knight c4? I vote for knight c4, definitely. I don't like rook e8, but I wouldn't play knight c4, it's such a mess. I, I'm not okay. sure that I can enter a position where I don't know what's going on. 
But do you have any other suggestions? Maybe I would protect the pawn from b7, queen b7. Do you have but anything against don't it? Don't you have uh, a double attack, like queen a3, attacking your a5 for knight and Not e7? Not again. This position is so tricky. Yeah, so you want to play tricky. queen a3, I see. Exactly. But now I have knight c4. And what about queen e7? Mm, well, I hope I can get the pawn back. Queen e takes, yeah. bishop takes. Rook e8, now what are you going to do with that bishop? Okay, come back with um, on b4. b4, I take the pawn. And d5. Mm, and now I need to find a way to stop that pawn. <laughs> exactly. I guess I have to go back with the rook. So I advance the pawn. And now... Bishop f8. Okay, yeah. a good move. Pinning my bishop on b4, right? Yes. And after um, b7, think... rook d8 and... Luckily, you did not manage to promote that pawn. Exactly, <laughs> you have scary. Bishop have fate. <laughs> it was Kinder really fate, scary, right. and to play this position against Topico is even <laughs> scarier. <laughs> okay. So this would have led to equality. But let's get back to the game. I'm very interested how Kappa won this game. Yeah, rook e8, what a weird move, don't you think? Yeah. So either knight c4, Topico's move, or queen b7, the move I prefer. Your move. <laughs> But rook e8 is so, so strange from Kasparov, isn't that? It's very strange, I agree with you. What do you, you think, what he thought? Well, I think he just... Uh, he maybe missed something like... Uh, what was played in the game? D5, right? Yeah, let's have a look what he missed, because yeah. it might not be the moment when he didn't see what's going to happen. Rook, ah, rook c1, c1 of course. very natural move. Of course, he, he had to expect this move. The, the rook coming is coming on c5. c5. And now the queen has to move. There are plenty of options. He went to b7. Okay, normal move. And after d5, now, of course, this knight is still misplaced. You have exactly. to. Exactly. So to what go. about knight c4? Yeah, knight c4. And as your knight is much better than my one, I'm going to exchange it. Oh, very positional, right? You see, there's a good piece that the opponent has, well, exchange it. Great idea. Easy. Chess is so easy. But what if I don't exchange and just go back on d6, the better square than a5? Um, it's indeed better. Kasparov didn't play it. That's, that's a bit strange really? again. Yet again, a strange move. He oh did, my god. He did not avoid the exchange of knights. Knight d6 was indeed a better move. Was it really Kasparov playing? Maybe it was his cousin, <laughs> I'm not sure. In the database it says Gary Kasparov. I wow, hope we are strange. checking his game. Okay, I <laughs> Do really you think hope. there are more Gary Kasparovs in the world? Um, I'm not sure. There is okay. only one legendary Gary Kasparov in okay, the world. Okay, so it's him. Yes. It's him. Knight d6 was good. And yeah, you keep that knight on the board. And after rook c6, rook c8, this is a slightly inferior position for black, but... But uh, it shouldn't be lost. I mean, maybe yeah, you I can, can hold it. I can try to force you take on c6 with queen c2. So now you either give up the c5 or you take on c6. Right. That's a very good move. Yeah, and I have a better end game, but you might not be lost. I think I'm not lost. Uh, I think I can hold it. Yeah, probably you can. Okay. After all, the, the knight has improved its place. Yeah, that's very important. And the knight was very, very bad on a5. And my knight on d2 is not so, so good. Uh, yeah, right. So that's why it's so weird that after knight d2, Kasparov took on d2. He's exchanging a piece. But wait a minute, what if I take on d2 and play rook c8 simply? Is there any trick? Ah, you calculated this line that you take on d2, I take back. Exactly. And rook c8. So you want to exchange everything and offer a draw. Exactly. Wow. I don't think you, you can make a use of it if there is no rooks on the board. Are you sure that there's no way to make use of this position? Oh right my god, what about that? rook c6? Indeed! What, what about what? rook c6? What a move! What oh a my move. god, do you see the line? Rook c6, d takes c6. Uh, and let's have a look, rook c6. Wow. You cannot take the rook pawn back. In case of rook takes, sorry. Uh, you would just take? Just take, and you cannot take the pawn yeah, back because I there can't. is queen d8 queen and d8. bishop f8, bishop h6 simply. Oof. And black is completely lost. Right. 
but wow but after rook c6 it means that i cannot i cannot scare that rook away of the c5 yeah and i have queen c2 ideas exactly Next what you move, said queen c2 exactly. you will have a c passed pawn yeah that's really, really Maybe that's dangerous. what Kasparov missed. You think that was what he missed? I think so. So when he played rook e8... He just thought maybe that I will exchange on c file and um, just make a draw. Yeah. But rook c6, what a move. Yeah, it's indeed a very strong move. Let's have a look once again. Rook c6. Because in any, there's no other option to, to have an edge I exactly think. exactly after exchanging rooks of course this position is nothing is nothing is you nothing. cannot make use of it yeah so rook c6 well that's really something wow and that was played in the game indeed wow karpov played it karpov. you see okay karpov also sees tactics <laughs> of course it's he does. a little bit of tactics but yeah but okay he's great player his great positional player. Let's see the game, yeah. Of course Kasparov didn't take on c6. Yeah. He played bishop e5, trying to get that bishop defend the queen side. Of course, and uh, I like this move very much actually, because look at the king on g1. Maybe somewhere I have ideas to mate you. You are right in this case. I'm a bit scared already, because you are you're placing your bishop on this diagonal and now my back rank, I need to be really careful about the back rank. Yeah, you have to be a bit careful. I don't have this escape for the king anymore. And you can also see that the king has free space on g7. So yeah. I won't have any problems if you're you have right. some threats on my oh, back actually, rank. Actually, now you can already capture on c6. Exactly, maybe. that's the threat. So I have to, I have to do you something You have to take care that. of it. Either queen c2 or what was played in the game, bishop c3. What do you think about this one? Wow, what a great move. You see, I always do the same. You have a good piece, I'm gonna exchange it. You had a good knight on c4, I exchanged it. And That's now you really have this scary. great bishop, I'm always wow. exchanging your good pieces. So if I go back here on this great diagonal, a1, h8, controlling in my this. king also and very scary. The yes. queen comes on d4 and there is mating attack. But Indeed. if I exchange it, it's worse, I guess, because uh, the queen comes with tempo on c3 and now I either I have to change it, either I have to give the c file. Yeah. What do you think? Oh, wow. Take on c3 or keep this bishop? Maybe you have more chances if you keep the bishop. As you said, you have some threats against my king. Exactly. Well, maybe it keeps me more in the game, but what I can tell you about is that if I have bishop c3, queen c3 position, then I don't even dream of activating my pieces. Yes, <laughs> you're right. So, so maybe bishop b8 keeps some chances. Yeah, that's indeed what Kasparov thought. <laughs> Are you Kasparov's pupil, by the way? Or? Unfortunately not. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> queen d4. Of course, the idea um, is quite clear. Yeah. What you gonna do about that? You wanna mate on g7, <laughs> you tricky girl. Only move f6. Exactly. And now bishop a5, just improving the position step by step. But I was wondering what happens after rook b6, because it looks like a strong move. Oh no! Oh. You have a... You see? Rook c3. Rook c3, tricky girl. Exactly. You wanted to keep this bishop, so then... I would get mated. Of course. That's what I told All you. Right. That's what I told you. So guys, we have a positional advantage. We still have to be careful. Yeah, you have to be always alert about the tactics and about counterattack. Indeed. That's why bishop a5 is a great move. And you see, when you played b5, I told you that move, the pawn is not going to move back. Exactly. And you have this. I got the c5. And now I have the c5. The c5 and the a5 square too. Exactly, you're dominating on dark squares. You are right, you are right. You should have played b6. Exactly. Let's see how the game finished, okay. After bishop a5, bishop d6. And here white is just improving the position Why step is? by step. Exactly. You have to do something about it. We already said that after the exchange, of course, this pawn is... It's this deadly pawn, scary. <laughs> it is. 
promoting soon you have to keep the queen underneath exactly. and the queen is not white is completely dominating the position yeah and you don't really want to blockade a pawn yeah. with the queen of course so he moved the rook and now of course i have all the time in the world to improve little by little on my position <laughs> what a3 you want to play? a3 yeah you, so you don't have any b4 or just I You're completely killing my play on Queen's side. I'm trying to take little by little all the space you have and all counter chances. Wow. Means that you're afraid of Kasparov that at some time he can mess something up on the queen side with b4, queen b5 and queen counts to the king um, near. It's better to be afraid than to actually <laughs> blunder. It's I prefer true. prophylaxis. Very good. Queen, queen, king g7, well, it's not so easy to make a move with black here. Yeah. And g3. So then yeah, now bishop f4. Very, very, very good play by Karpov. And my Karpov. back rank, my back rank, look. Yeah. There's no mate anymore. Yeah. You're totally free. Bishop e5. The queen's coming closer. Yeah. I think you could already think about resigning soon because I don't oh, see any active really. plan for you. I don't see an active plan for you. Yeah. I'm, that, that's true, I don't have any plan to suggest and my position is very weak. The rook on c6 is simply a great piece it on is, the board. It is. Again, exchanging told you. bishop. <laughs> the only active piece I have on the board. I told you, you have a good piece, I'm going to exchange it. That's a great example. Of course, Pay attention I'm going to exchange it move. if it's a piece that I have my, that is worse. I'm not going to exchange my good pieces for her bad pieces. Of <laughs> no way. She's not so kind. <laughs> <laughs> so Bishop C7, what are you going to do about that? Well, I'm not going to exchange. All Let's right. go somewhere. A1. Exactly. Bishop but now we can see that the Bishop on A1 is very poor. You see the, this maneuver from A5, I'm, I'm going to F4. Activating your bishop so badly. And wow. I already have the c7 square for my rook. Exactly. So that was your idea, yes. right? To kick my bishop from e5, now, which defends the c7. The seventh rank is just for me. Exactly. <laughs> very, very good play. Well, queen d7 was played by Kasparov. Um, it's difficult to suggest any better move for black. It's rook very, c7, very queen d8, and d6. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yes, I think Kasparov would love to be white here. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> the end is close. Exactly. D5, just the last try, but as we said, Karpov, just because he's a positional player doesn't mean that he cannot calculate. He played D7, attacking the rook, and this postpone is already very, very dangerous. Exactly, the rook very has dangerous. To move. And he comes back with a bishop. Just so very easy. Simple. Yes, very simple. Very simple chess. Look at the d7 pawn. Look at the rook on c7. Wow, yes. the pawn on e7 is so weak again. And look at the bishop. Yeah. Simply look at black species. Queen yes. on d8. What You're is right. he doing there? Bishop on a1. You're out right. of play completely. Wow, what a game. Indeed, and soon he has to resign. He tried bishop e5. Kicking and you this. said that this yeah. bishop on a1 was not doing anything, not trying to defend, but after rook b7, he indeed resigned. A very, very good play by Karpov. Maybe um, he thought that after bishop d6, just queen a7 was coming and he cannot move. I, there are I threats agree. everywhere and the d7 pawn is going to promote. I agree with you. Thank you for showing such a great game. So what do you think? Uh, b5, was that a good move? Well, I still think it was in spirit of Kasparov, a very active move. But objectively speaking, b6 was better. You think so? And you know that in the future we will see a game where a similar thing happened. Really? And so after b5, in the game Kramnik Aronian, mm -hmm. the same rook c6 happened. Oh, really? This will be the topic of a, another video by us. Thank you for watching. And see you soon. Hi, this is Grandmaster Damien Lemos. First of all, I hope you enjoyed um, this video. If you would like to receive more free chess videos from us, you can just click the subscribe button below. I would also highly recommend signing up 
for my free mail course, The 10 Grandmaster Secrets to Dominate Chess. During this exclusive course from OnlineChessLessons.net, I'll share with you my own Grandmaster shortcuts to effective attacking, defending and growth hacks to improving your chess without um, complicated books or memorization. So sign up by clicking the sidebar on the right and I know you won't be disappointed. Once more, this is Damien uh, for OnlineChessLessons.net and I'll see you um, in my videos. Thank you.